Hi everyone, checking in with you for this week's Midweek Devotional. Well, last week I talked about times when God seems absent, and we're going to continue that today. Today we're going to look at a different psalm with the same theme. You know, feeling like God is hiding is not uncommon. In fact, there are many psalms that speak to this topic. There are at least half a dozen psalms that contain the phrase, Do not hide your face from me. You know, a common experience for people when it comes to relating to God are times when God does not feel near. This week we're going to look at Psalm 102. I want to read to you verses 1 and 2. It says, Hear my prayer, Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me when I am in distress. Turn your ear to me when I call. Answer me quickly. So what do we do when God does not feel near? Well, today I want to give you five things we should do. The first one is trust and obey. Ask yourself, am I trusting in what God has already promised? You know, sometimes when we feel stuck, we need God to reveal something to us or provide a new opportunity. But sometimes what we need is to remind ourselves what God has already promised. You know, in the Psalms, the writer goes back to what God has already done. You know, in Psalm 95, it talks about Israel after God delivered them from slavery in Egypt and promised to take them into the Promised Land. During the journey in the desert, they grumbled, complained, and did not believe that God would defeat their enemies. They didn't trust God. They needed to remember what God had promised them, that God promised to give them the land, and that they would need not fear those who opposed them if they trusted that God would give them the victory over their obstacles. But instead, they chose to harden their hearts. We need to trust in what God has already promised and be obedient to what we already know. The second is to grow in faith. Ask yourself, am I still grateful and continue to worship God in times of hiddenness? You know, it takes greater faith to worship in times of hiddenness, to be thankful when nothing seems to be happening. You know, I can remember a time years ago when I almost got in a bad car accident. I lost control over my vehicle on the highway, and I actually crossed several lanes in traffic, and yet somehow I missed all the other cars. I remember getting off at the next exit. I was shaking from it, but I was so thankful I just avoided something terrible. You know, it's easy to be thankful when God just saved you from a disaster. But in times of dryness, when God doesn't feel close, when nothing good seems to be happening in your life, those are the times when it's difficult to be thankful, to even think about being thankful. And it's in those times that require greater faith. It's an opportunity for us to grow in our faith. So the third one is, uh, check your motives. Ask yourself, do I really want God's will? Or do I just want God to keep bad things from happening to me? You know, when we say we want God's will, or ask for His will to be done, is it His will or our will? Do we say, God, give me no hardships, no consequences, no waiting, no grief, make everything so it's easy and works out the way I want it to? Is that God's will, or is that our will? You know, what if God asked you to do something and told you it won't work out the way you want it to, and that you experience suffering in the process? Would you still do it? You know, Jesus did. The disciples did. You know, Jesus' death involved a great deal of pain, and yet it was God's will, because God had a greater ultimate purpose. You know, Jesus' followers have endured many things that are part of God's plan and purpose. The fourth one is, recognize the dangers of unbroken success. Now you may ask, what's wrong with nonstop mountaintop experiences? Doesn't that sound nice? You know, when we experience great failure, when we are in the desert, we feel dry, we feel exhausted, isolated, disconnected, vulnerable. But when we experience long stretches of great success, we're actually in great danger. So what's wrong with lots of success? What's wrong is when unbroken success mixes with our sinful nature. The scripture says we are in danger of forgetting God. It says we become proud, believing it was our strength that produced the success we have. You know, the temptation is that we feel that we don't really need God's help. You know, I'm doing just fine. Oh, we might give thanks for our food before we wolf it down. Life is good. Things are great. But we don't feel this need to be particularly passionate in our pursuit of God. You know, there's something healthy for our soul to be at the end of our rope. When all our plans and skills cannot make this problem go away, we recognize the truth that we cannot live without God. We can't do it on our own. We have a problem bigger than ourselves. When all seems good, beware, because Scripture says we're in spiritual danger. And the fifth one is be encouraged. Ask yourself, do I want God to deal with me the way he did with the heroes of the faith? Consider these examples. Abraham. God promised Abraham a son, but after years, nothing. How and when God was going to do it was hidden from Abraham, but God still delivered on his promise. Consider Joseph. 
God told Joseph that his brothers would serve him. But he found himself sold as a slave and then falsely accused and thrown into prison for years. Its fulfillment was hidden from him for years. But God still delivered on his promise. Look at Moses. God called Moses to deliver his people out of slavery when Moses was 80 years old. God promised that he would rescue his people from the hand of Pharaoh. But it was only after many, many hardships that the promise was fulfilled. And look at David. God anointed David as the next king. But then David spent years running for his life, hiding in caves, being hunted down by Saul, before God fulfilled his promise and David eventually became king. You know, there are times when God is doing something in your life you can't see yet. And you have to trust that God is not being harsh, but God is being kind in a way that is currently hidden from us. So we don't understand in the moment. So be encouraged. This is how God worked among his people throughout history.